inviting me to this event. I'm looking forward to talking and, and interacting. And let me say, it's an honor for me to be on the same stage with Vashek Basharovich. I admire him greatly. I was here, as he mentioned, back in December of 1989. And so it's the beginning of the transition, uh, trying to provide support, moral and financial, to that great undertaking, uh, which I think has been amazingly successful. And as I observe leaders and political leaders over time, it's carrying out something like that requires extraordinary courage and leadership. So I'm particularly honored to be here uh, for that reason. People ask me, and I say I was here 21 years ago, how things have changed. Well, I've been back a few times since then, but I do have sort of a snapshot over that period. And it's clearly quite remarkable just walking down the streets and seeing people seem to be smiling a lot more, uh, things are cleaner, more modern. Uh, it's just a pleasure, it's a pleasure to be here for that reason. Now I'm going to uh, speak about uh, the financial crisis and causes and lessons learned. And I do have some, a PowerPoint slideshow, which I hope will be coming up in a minute. There it is. Um, and so, actually as I see these slides, I'm reminded of the discussion we had on the panel a few minutes ago, and uh, Mr. Robosky was saying that we need to think about the two-year-olds and the three-year-olds. Well, I, I like to teach uh, beginning students in economics and uh, use charts a lot. They're going to have some charts today. I think charts are really useful to explain things. Sometimes the charts don't uh, jump out at you as much as you like. I think they're. I love charts. I think they're dramatic sometimes, but sometimes you just see them for the first time and you say, hmm, what's, what's the big deal with that chart? So I had a chart, and I'm going to show you a little bit of that today. I have a chart that shows you rising debt levels in the United States. It's actually kind of a scary chart as I see it. But I showed it to my students and they didn't see it was so scary. So I figured, well, maybe I need to do something a little more. So um, I, I enlisted the, the services of a guest lecturer speaking of young children. The guest lecturer was my granddaughter. She is five months old. So I brought her to the lecture, went to the class about this size, brought her in my arms, and we turned around and looked at the charts. She looked up, wow, looked at the charts, and somehow just spoke into my ear. It didn't look, was not saying anything at five months, not that bright. And um, so I turned around to the student. She said, fix it. <laughs> and that was the main message from a, 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 then a five-month-old, and I think uh, that should be the message uh, for us. Now, I'm going to uh, go through my uh, explanation of the financial crisis. It has, uh, I think, some important lessons, and to go to the, I guess I pressed this to get to the slide, so see if it works, yeah. So what I'd like to do in explaining my the views or the assessment of the financial crisis is to indicate the approach that I'm taking because I think it's important. Lots of people are out there commenting about what caused it. There's lots of books and lots of articles, but I think to get your own assessment, you want to sort of think about what's the approach that the person is taking. And I've tried to take an approach that looks carefully at the data, looks at the timing of what went first, what went second to use what I think are counterfactuals, which means to ask what would have happened if policy had been different, that's the counterfactual. Always trying to be as objective, not ideological, there's so much ideological uh, baggage that's taken to this discussion and debate. Of course, try to be nonpartisan because 